Welcome back, everyone. And today we are re back for more Othorarir, the Heathen jo Journal. Um, next article we are reading is Reconstructionism in Modern Heathenry. Introduction. And sorry if I mispronounced the name. It's I have like the pronunciation like on a paper, but it's hard for me because I have a speech impediment. But anyway, let's get started. Over the course of the last decade, the term Reconstructionism has switched forward as part of a very real movement within the American heathenry. The axiom of this movement has been a shift towards an approach that is quite different from those previously advocated in most mainstream circles, and is helping to redefine and reshape heathen communities in very powerful ways. The term Reconstructionism did not really begin to circulate in conjunction with modern heathenry until the late 1990s in America, when Bill Lindsay first published the article Germanic Spirituality on July 11, 2003, and followed up with the first truly comprehensive analysis of Reconstructionism in heathenry in 2004. The term was only just beginning to make headway. Today the word is commonplace in heathen communities across the United States. And in many ways, this is thanks to the research of Lindsay and his contemporaries. To understand that in order to be for heathenry to be validated in, in the modern world, it would need to be based upon historical reality. But the concepts in it carries with it are being stunted by misunderstandings and misrepresentations propagated by opponents and proponents alike. The purpose of this article is to introduce a compact introduction to Reconstructionism which really dispels some of the misunderstandings and replace them with an understanding of what it really is. It is also the intent of this article to provide the basic arguments as to why Reconstructionism is an important approach to heathenism how this translates into the individual's understanding of heathenry. But re before Reconstructionism as it is can be discussed, some of the most prominent misunderstandings can need to be addressed in order to explain what is it is not. The popular belief that Reconstructionism is an attempt to recreate the Viking world and recreate the objects and events associated with that, that is a misunderstanding which has given rise to one of the more common arguments posed against it. That is a Satsuru, is a living, breathing, breathing religion, and we should be focused on growing and developing instead of trying to go back in time or simply imitate rituals. The reality, however, is that Reconstructionism has nothing to do with things or events. The heathen reconstructionist should have no interest in rebuilding the Viking world or the heathen way of life as it was a millennia ago. Centr certainly there are groups of modern heathens who choose to wear Viking Age garb during events and there are those that have attempted to, to construct particular social structures or imitate rituals exactly as they are described in history texts. These should not be mistaken for Reconstructionism or heathenry, however. That's not what they are. They are simply things and actions. If Reconstructionism was about imitating e events, objects, or even rituals, then it may, will it may well be renamed reenactment. And it would indeed be a static and rigid pursuit. It is also said that of Reconstructionism, as it pertains to heathenry, that it is the process of reconstructing an ancient heathen religion. On the surface, it w this would appear to be, be true, but it is some degree. But this definition inherently omits, omits any of the reality behind that process. It fails to address exactly what is really being reconstructed, reconstructed and it neglects the process of how an individual goes about their reconstructionism. If it is a religion, then on what terms is it being reconstructed? Is a religion being ciphered? out of a vague understanding of an entirely foreign culture, like broken jewelry out of sand and wired together to the shape and understanding of modern American with a Judeo-Christian background? If this is the case, then one cannot claim that the end result of this process is a reconstructed religion when it is fuck, where did I go? When it is really a modern construct bearing the surface, of pr surface appearance of its original form. The original spiritual framework has been lost. I it has 
It is with this understanding that any researcher of heathen, heathen religion should operate. The reality is that the spiritual framework, which what we label as heathenry, is inexplicably bound to the culture and locality from it which it developed and cannot be separated. The very idea that religion and culture can be separated is, in fact, inherently unheathen. Rel religion, in our modern sense of the world, is an idea divorced from culture, from landscape, from language, and from worldview. A term which I have often used in the, the past is modular religion as opposed to ethnic religion. A modern religion is a religion which can be easily imported and exported across cultural boundaries. The most common modern example of a modular Christian religion is Christianity. The concept is completely self-contained, -contain essentially complete with its own rules, laws, axioms, and cor corollaries, i.e. a module. A modular religion stands in direct contrast to ethnic religion, such as the indigenous religions of Africa, Australia, Alaska, and Greenland. Anthropologists over the past 150 years have entertained have been entertained, fascinated, and frustrated by how closely bound co religion, culture, worldview, and these regions are to landscape, occupation, environment. Heathenry historically has a series of ethnic religions. In order to reconstruct a model of any of the ancient heathen religions, the adherent must thoroughly investigate the culture that they are intertwined with. One must investigate the social structure, the language, the customs, and the political system not to find things to reconstruct or how to do things. These are simply the aesthetics of a cultural worldview. Rather, the researcher must seek to understand why, which shaped those systems and must try to comprehend the worldview from which the investigative religion has developed. It is the worldview which formed the foundation from wh which heathen practice, action, belief, and tradition developed amongst the pre-Christian Germanic people. The world we produce the why is the world we itself that we aim to reconstruct. Worldview as it is defined is how an individual subconsciously interprets relationships with perceived events, as well as the logic used to explain one's personal relationship to the world outside of the self. It is the very matrix through which can we understand our world. It is tied directly to the culture and environment that we are born and raised in. Because worldview is primary shaper is culture, a middle class American has an entirely different worldview than Indian Hindu or maybe the Hulu people of Papua New Guinea. Likewise, the worldview of American is American, any American, or any European for the matter, is exceedingly different from the that of the pre Christian Germanic people. They themselves will have different re religious and cultural worldviews depending on when and where they were. These differences must be recognized and acknowledged by the Reconstructionists. It is important to note that the worldview is not a body of knowledge. It is a system of interpretation, a type of map, which not only redefines relationships between events, but also predicts how the two events interact with each other. Because of the map defines, describes, and helps to predict interactions between events, the model leads to the development of protocols for what the particular worldview considers proper interaction. In other words, social mores, legal systems, and moral and ethical systems are developed. Lastly, the worldview becomes a, a cosmological model. It becomes necessary for guidelines of both secu secular and religious ceremony. The worldview builds the framework for how an individual understands religion, and not the individual pr interprets the guidelines and how the individual interprets the guidelines for developing practice within it. Since we are not born into a heathen culture, the single biggest challenge is understanding their worldview, is the danger of internalizing processing that which we learn from the ancient heathens through our own unheathen filters. Which are inherently foreign to customs and beliefs we are investigating. The human mind is prone to reinterpreting information it receives into that which it understands, and when it comes face to face with that which it does not understand, particularly when exposed to a separate culture, this result is also referred to as culture shock. It is very easy for an American to look at the Hindu caste system and say, that is unjust. 
Likewise, the thought of arranged marriage in Hindu society are unsettling unthinkable to our American ideas. However, traditional marriages are still the overwhelming marriage type in India, and to the Hindu families, to follow this practice is, it is the correct way of doing things. Because it is very difficult for an American to accept the idea of the caste system, true conversion to Hinduism is perhaps impossible. However, the researcher must be able to set aside the their preconceived notions as best they can. In order to put the world worldview of the cultural group they are investigating into a fair context. While it's easy to point to differences in worldview between an Anglo-American and, an and an Indian Hindu, and while the American se seeking to fully understand the Hindu worldview can opt to move to India, American humans do have do not have that option. They must con consciously safeguard themselves from in misinterpretation. To the heathen using the reconstructionist approach, it is crucial to accept that we have a vastly different worldview and cultural context when we instinctively and subconsciously and reinterpret what we learn of a pre-Christian Germanic thought through our own modern lens. Our map of interpretation and the inevitable outcome will be cultural misappropriation. What will we, we will no longer be reconstructing a version of heathen religion or worldview, but rather something entirely different and most likely constructed with cultural schemas, schemas that are inherited from Christianity. The plethora of the New Age and neo-pagan movements within America are a prime example of this end result, with their emphasis on personal relationship with deities, afterlife, afterlife rewards, and a focus on the spiritual growth. I have thus far used the term modern to describe today's American worldview, and this is in many ways misleading. It gives the notion that our worldview is more developed and superior to that of any to that of the ancient heathen. Indeed, opponents of Reconstructionism have attempted to use this argument for years to justify interpreting, mis inter interpreting information from a modern perspective which modernizes heathenry, but it is a sincerely flawed argument. The reality that is that in America today, a vast proportion of our culture is per pe permeated and shaped by Christianity and urbanization. This is the foundation of which our worldview is and is not based off of a cultural, natural evolution of Germanic thought over time. While parts of heathen culture have survived the most, for example, due to our modern, move in modern environment, we naturally interpret and even think through Christian schemas. Such schemata must be reworked in order to approximate heathenry, and the only way to do so, do that, do that is to reconstruct, be ac acquainted with, and understand heathen schema. The reality is that American society today is a product that has been shaped by layer after layer of social and economic change, from the Industrial Revolution to the Protestant Reformation, Reformation to the start of the Renaissance, before that, and so on. Each movement between today and the time of pre-Christian heathen has em emphasized its own concepts, the values, and the ideal parameters of human interaction that are further and further removed from those that are, were originally a part of heathen cultures. The heathen concepts of inner guard and utgard, frith and luck, have been replaced or given an entirely new form again and again, so that they have lost their native context. Two thousand years of established Christian schemata have so thoroughly saturated Western culture that simply be by existing in this society, one will be imparted with a worldview that is described unheathen. When it comes to the concept of religion, Christian upbringing and environment is uh, inescapable today. There is nothing in the United States, including New Age religions such as Wicca, which has not been formed, manipulated, and shaped by urbanization in the revelatory module religion, Christianity. This is the implicit order of things. It is what you have is what has created our filter of interpretation, and we are largely er uh, unaware of it. You can have never stepped foot out inside of a church, and you still will interpret every action, every relationship with between man, earth, work, family, God, and every aspect of life through this filter or worldview. Even radically opposed belief systems, such as Satanism, are nothing more than a reflection of that which they oppose. They are based off of in reactionary to Christian thought, 
We have to break free of it, however, and in, in, in the end, are nothing more than a reactionary module. Even the concept of what religion is differs vastly between our current worldview and the worldview of Christian, a pre-Christian Germanic people. There is no indication or evidence that these people even had a sense of religion. Though the closest early terms translate to custom, the way we commonly do things, or tradition, and we in are in no way separated from the mundane world. They have left us no words which may imply prayful or spiritual to consci consciously or engage in an activity strictly is a spiritual exercise it is only necessary in world rejecting world rejecting religions christianity wicca and buddhism and islam are all modular world rejecting religions and can, se can be separated out from cu cultural tradition they are transcultural christianity and wicca are similar in, th in that both can be added to a culture to produce a new variation centered around the same theme. Likewise, much of, the, uh, much of these religions' sense of spirituality is separable from the culture. Sense of spirituality found today often involves some form of meditation, quiet reflection, prayer, or a worshipful demeanor in which the individual connects or seeks to connect from some otherworldly entity, or in revelation, what is so simply to feel at peace and whole with the world in oneself. The Germanic heathen religion tradition worldview, <laughs> on the other hand, like most indig indig indigenous folk worldviews, was a world accepting tradition and closely tied to the very land and culture where it was practiced and could not e easily be separated from it. From within these religions, these traditions, I mean, law, cultural norms, and proper behavior are all interconnected with the religious belief. Maintenance of spiritual fulfillment in this sort of worldview world accepting system is achieved by maintaining one's standing with its described community through adhesion to a prescribed set of social principles which that community has defined. Generally, one does not seek otherworldly sa satisfaction in the spiritual sense mentioned above, but seeks to broaden his base and standing in his community by expanding on his skills, responsibilities, and reputation and interactions with the otherworldly forces that are the gods are in intended to directly influence this world in numerous ways, numerous forms such as luck. They are not intended to further one's otherworldly standing. Modern pagan religions such as Asatru, Remuva, and Religia Romana, among others, should strive to understand the pre-Christian worldview and cultural context of the beliefs and rituals they are dr drawing from if they are to be revived. However, the primary impediment is the fact that in order to be able to do so, the revivalists must collect and analyze information through the Christianized modern filters which were created by the culture that trained those people to subconsciously interpret in the first place. This means that quite often the individual will think that they understand the information they are studying in an, inac in an accurate hidden context but in reality, they are interpreting it in their own way and are s taking the information out of its context, stripping it of its original meaning. The inevitable outcome then is the Christian schema, a worldview remaining firmly established under pagan guise. The single greatest tool with which to combat the issue with is to simply understand that this is the case and to be aware of it. The researcher must have a willingness to set aside all preconceived beliefs and notions while doing the, the research. We should question in spite of the fact that we may never discover in the course of, e of examination that some of our most cherished beliefs may have been accepted on blind faith, taken from our own worldviews and misinterpretation. Subject, subject at hand. Okay. I'm not finished yet, but my battery is running low, and I'm going to make a part two of this, just to let you know. So, stay tuned, and I hope you like this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Bye!